Okay, so this is the uh, 2014 Junior Cert sample paper question one. Okay, from the diagram above, list the elements of P intersection Q. Now, we got to remember about P intersection Q is it's everything in P and everything in Q. So what we can do is we can draw a circle around P and Q and figure out what elements are in them. Okay, now what I mean by the word elements is what's inside. Okay, so here it is here. Draw it here, so this is inside P and Q only. And there we go. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Next one will be Q intersection R. Okay. Now Q intersection R is going to be uh, these two points here, five and six. Okay, so Q intersection R is 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Okay, next one. P union Q intersection R. Everything that's in P and, because union means and, everything that's in R. Q intersection R. So let's start with Q intersection R. Okay, so Q intersection R. Q intersection R is a uh, five and six, which is this part here. And then it wants everything that's also in P. So what we do is we cover this part here, everything that's in P and Q intersection R. Now what we have is one, two, four, five, and six. One, two, four, five, and six. Miriam says, for all sets, union is distributive over intersection. Name a set that you use along with P union Q intersection R to show that Miriam's case is true for all sets, P, Q, and R in the Venn diagram above. Okay, so first of all, we have to figure out what is a... Uh, Miriam says, for all sets, union is distributive over intersection. Name a set that you would use along the what along with P union Q intersection R to show that Miriam's case is true for the sets P Q and R in the Venn diagram group. Now we'll already know that just from general multiplication that three multiplied by four plus five equals three multiplied by four and three multiplied by five, which is going to be twelve plus fifteen, which gets us twenty-seven. Also, if we were to add if we were to add the bracket first, we get 3 times 9, which is 27. This illustrates the distribu distribu distributive property of multiplication over addition. So, bottom line there is in that language is that we can multiply before addition. So, we can multiply before we add. Okay, so on this one, we're trying to find out that union is distributive over intersection. So we can do union first and intersection second. So at the moment we have P intersection, uh, P union Q intersection R. Now let's figure out exactly what this is. Okay. And we'll bring back the Venn diagram, okay? So P union Q intersection R. P union Q intersection R is going to be, we already have the answer for it, it's going to be 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Now, what we can do here is we can break up the uh, intersection part, and what we can do is P union Q intersection P union R and see if this works okay so P union Q P union R okay so this here is a Q and let's see if it turns out to be the same answer okay so P union Q or sorry yeah P union Q is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it's going to be 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 
and it's going to be intersection P union R. Now P union R is going to be this one here. Okay. And it's 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 4, 5. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now, let's see what's in common. Intersection means what do they have in common? So let's open, uh, let's circle the ones they have in common. 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 4, 5, 5. 6, 6, and therefore the answer is going to be 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. And as we can see, both answers are the same. So what happens is union is distributive over intersection. Okay? Now, the, the set that we would use along with P union Q union R is this one here P union Q intersection P union R. And this is used to show that Miriam's claim is true for the sets P, Q, and R. Okay, guys, next question. Question two. U is 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 30. A is multiples of 2, B is multiples of 3, and C is multiples of 5. Find the, how, the casual number. Find how many numbers in between 2 and 30. Uh, are not multiples of 2, multiples of 3, and multiples of 5. I'll explain that means now, okay? So what we'll do is we'll put in a, uh, a Venn diagram. Okay, and this is the box for union. So we have our three sets, okay, A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Now, let's write down the list, the multiples of A. Multiples of A are gonna be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 and 30. Okay, and that's going to be in the first box. And the second box is B, and these are going to be multiples 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. Close it there. And finally, C. It's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Now, to begin with, everything that's intersection, okay, so what we can do first and foremost is figure out uh, what's in the middle, okay? So how many of them are in the middle? So what we're looking for is numbers that are in common with everything, okay? So uh, I think it's just the number 30. Okay, number 30 is the only one that's in all three sets, okay? So that's just, 30 is one number. So that's why the number one goes in here, okay? Now, let's see what B has in common with C, okay? So it's going to be 15 is the only one the two of them have in common, which is also one number, okay? Let's see what A has in common with B. A has in common with B is going to be 6, 12, 18, it's going to have 24 in common as well. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. So there's four of them in common there. Okay, now what we got to remember about uh, four of them that aren't the number 30. Okay, now next, how many does A have left? Okay, it has one, two, oh sorry, I use a different color here. It has a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Okay, this one here has one, two, three, four. Four. And finally, five will have 
Oh, sorry, I also forgot uh, A intersection B, excuse me. A intersection B was 4. I haven't done A intersection C yet, so excuse me about that. A intersection C I haven't done yet, okay? So which one of these are uh, divisible by 2? So that's going to be 1 and 2. So that's 2, okay? So that means we can also get rid of uh, 10 and 20 there, okay? So 10 and 20 don't count. 10 and 20 don't count. Okay, now we can count out how many of these we have left. So we have 1, 2. Two numbers here. And then let's see how many of, uh, of these ones we have, okay? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No longer 10, 8. Now when we add all these up together, we should get the same amount of numbers between 2 and 30. It should be 28 in total. So let's find out. Okay. Because all the numbers are 28. So we're basically leaving out some numbers here. Okay. So we have 10, 12, 10, 12, 15, 10, 12, sorry, 10, 12, 17, 17 plus 5, 22. 22 out of 28 are accounted for. Now, which are the numbers that are not accounted for? Well, they're going to be the prime numbers, okay? So the, some of the prime numbers that aren't accounted for would be the number 7, 11, 13, uh, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Okay, now that's seven numbers, so we might have double counted somewhere. So let's see if we double counted. Okay, so we have 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Okay. Okay, so. What we've got to remember is in between 1 and 30, okay? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, and that explains everything. So we have 22 numbers for accounted for, and we have the seven prime numbers on the uh, outside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, which aren't included in A, B, and C. So now we know what this means here, okay? Find the cardinal number of A, union B, union C complement. This means everything that's not inside A, union B, union C. And the answer to that is going to be 7. Okay? How many divisors does the numbers in A, union B, union C have? How many divisors do they have? Okay. So divisors. A divisor are numbers that can go into all three of them, okay? So we know that the numbers, uh, if we look at all the numbers, that aren't the prime numbers, so we're going to have uh, 2, 3, 4, well, they aren't these prime numbers, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 30. Okay? So these are all the numbers that are in this set. Okay? In here. Now, how many divisors do they have? Okay, well, the number 2, because 2 divides into 2, the number 3, the number 4, because uh, how many divides does each of the numbers? So it has to be each of the numbers. Okay, A union B union C have. Oh, complement, okay. So it's the numbers that aren't included in here. So basically, these numbers are prime numbers, okay. So the prime numbers that we're talking about here is it's the numbers outside, the numbers outside A union B union C. So we're talking about the numbers 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Okay. 
How many dividers does each of the numbers A union B union C complement have? Okay, so what's going to happen here is the divisors they all have is the number 1, okay, because 1 divides into them all, and they also each of the numbers. So they only have one divisor in common, but that's not the question they're asking. It goes, how many divisors in total? So these are the numbers that will divide in evenly to the numbers in each set. So we're going to talk, it says how many. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 divisors, okay? What name is given to numbers that have this many divisors? So they have one divisor and themselves as, and the number one as the other divisor. These are called prime numbers. Because they only have themselves and one other number that will multiply to give them back themselves, okay? So seven equals seven by one. That's the only two divisors of seven. Uh, 11 equals 11 by one. There's no other way of making them, okay? So that's what it means. Now, a group of 100 students were surveyed to figure out to find whether they drank tea or coffee or soft drink tea at any time in the previous week. Okay. 24 had no hot drink, had, had not drunk any of the three. So that's 24 on the outside. Okay. 51 drank tea or coffee, but not a soft drink. 21 drank tea or coffee, but not a soft drink, okay? So tea or coffee, not a soft drink. This section in here all sums up to 51, okay? Because they're not allowed to have, they're not allowed to have a soft drink. 41 drank tea, 20 drank at least two of the three, Eight drank tea and a soft drink, but no coffee. So tea and a soft drink. And being the key word, it means that it's the intersection of tea, intersection D, but it's not including coffee. T intersection D, less C. So what we can do here is T intersection D, but not including C, is eight. And we know that four drank all three, which is in here. And then nine drank a soft drink and a coffee. Soft drink and a coffee is nine, but that includes the four in the middle. The nine includes soft drink and a coffee, it includes the four there already. So what we need to do is we need to turn that into five. There should be nine in total. Okay, so now we've done this part here. Now we're working our way back up. 20 drank at least two of the three. 20, so this part here is three of three. The three black circles are two of three. So when we add these three together, we should get 20. So it's gonna be 20 minus five minus eight, which is 20 minus 13, which is seven. So that number is gonna be seven, okay? Now we've used this one here. 41 drank tea, so it's going to be 41 minus 7 minus 4 minus 8, which is 41 minus 19, which is 22. 22. 51 drank tea or coffee, but not a soft drink. Drank tea or coffee, but not a soft drink. So this here, as I discussed earlier, all of this here has to add up to, to uh, 51, okay? So it's going to be 51 minus 22 minus 7. It's going to be 51 minus 29, which is in turn uh, 22. Okay, so we know that that's there is 22. So now we've erased this part here. And finally, uh, hand drank any tree, so we had to figure out how many uh, drank uh, soft drinks only. Okay, so it's going to be a hundred, a hundred minus twenty two minus seven minus twenty two minus eight minus four minus five. Okay, 
and let's see what this turns out to be, okay? So it's going to be 100 minus 22 minus 7 minus 22 minus 8 minus 4 minus 5, that all equals 32, okay? Oh, now I'm sorry, we forgot the 24 on the outside. So minus a 24 from that as well, because we forgot about the 24 on the outside, which is 8. So basically when I add all this up together, all of these numbers together should get me 100, which they do. And that's the end of the question. Find the probability that a student chosen at random from the group had drunk tea or coffee. Well, there's 100 students in the group. Okay. Now, from the group had drunk tea or coffee tea or coffee okay this one drank tea it's not tea and coffee it's tea or coffee so it can be either okay this one drank tea and coffee also included the people in here drank tea or coffee drank tea or coffee here they drank tea or coffee here and tea or coffee here basically everything but the 8 and the 24 so 8 plus 24 is a uh, 32 100 minus 32 is 68. So it's going to be 68 out of 100, which is uh, 39, I say 34 out of 50, which is 17 out of 25. Find the probability that a student chosen at random from the group had drunk tea and coffee, but not a soft drink. Tea and coffee, not a soft drink. Okay, so we check this one out now. That's a seven. Now, to do this one, what we need to do is we need to uh, it's five and eight, eight, five, twenty two, and then eight and four. Okay. So what happens here is find the probability that a student chosen at random from the group had drunk tea and coffee but not a soft drink. So tea and coffee, it's not tea or coffee. Tea and coffee means you got to drink both. And that is technically 11. 11 people drank tea and coffee. But they're not allowed to drink a soft drink so that gets rid of the 4 which gives you 7. So the answer is going to be 7 out of 100. Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, Dermot has 5,000 euro he'd like to invest for two years. A special savings account is offering a rate of 3% for the first year and a higher rate for the second year. If the money is retained in the account, tax and if the money is retained in the account, tax of 33% will be deducted each year from the interest earned. Okay, so we'll, we'll be deducted each year from the interest earned. So what happens is he starts off with a uh, 5,000. 5,000 is 100% of his investment, right? And this is a year one. Okay, now what happens is he gets 3% extra. So at the end of the year, he should have 103%. To change 100 into 103, you divide by 100 and multiply by 103. Okay, so 5,000. 5,000 divided by 100. Multiply by 103. And what we get is 5,150. Now 5,150 is what we have, okay? Now the problem is tax of 33% is deducted each year from the interest earned. So 150 euro is 100% of the interest earned. Okay, it's the 100% of the interest. And what we gotta do is we gotta take away 33% of that. So what we're gonna be left with, when we take away 33%, we're gonna be left with 67%. So let's find out what 67% is. So it's going to be 150. 150 divided by 
150 divided by 100 multiply by 67 and what we have here is a hundred euro and five cent and um, fifty cents so a hundred euro fifty cents okay so we we say goodbye to the uh, five thousand one hundred and fifty because we don't get the full one fifty we get a thousand a uh, hundred and fifty so it's going to be five thousand one hundred and fifty and that's the end of year one okay how much will the investment be worth at the end of one year after tax is deducted? That's what we did. And it's going to be worth 5150 Derek calculates that after tax has been deducted, his investment will be worth around 5268 at the end of the second year. Calculate the rate of interest for the second year. Okay. So, year two. He starts with 5,150, ends with 5,268, okay? Now, this would mean that the interest he made with the tax deducted Now, the interest with the tax deducted equals 5,268 minus 5,150. And what we get here is 167.5. So 167.50 is the interest with uh, tax deducted, okay? Now, remember, it's 100% of the interest minus 33%. This means that this amount here was 67% of the entire interest, okay? So we want to find out is find out how much interest we actually got before this deduction happened. So we're going to find out what 100% is. To find out what 100% is, we're going to divide by 67 and multiply by 100, okay? So 1, 6, divide by 67 multiply by 100 and what we get is 250 okay so 100% is 250 now what happened is at the start of the year 1500 and uh, 1550 was invested and at the end at the start of the year and at the end 250 extra was made so we're going to add on 250 and what we get is 5350.50 okay now the rate is we got to find out how much interest we made and interest interest equals a uh, starting amount multiply by 250 I oh, say multiply by interest rate in decimals okay so what we can do now is we can find out I oh, say the uh, interest earned equals starting amount multiply by interest rate in decimals okay so what we can find out now is Interest earned is 250, and that equals the starting amount multiplied by R. Now we're going to divide it across. R equals 250 divided by 5,150. So let's do that in the calculator quickly. 250 divided by 5,000. 100.5 and what we get for the interest rate is we get 0 0.049 so the interest rate is 0 0.049 that's in decimals if we multiply that by 100 over 1 we'll get 4.9 percent 
and that was our rate of interest in the second year. Okay, next question. A meal at the restaurant cost Jerry three hundred and uh, one hundred and thirty-six euro twenty cent. The price included fats at thirteen point five percent. Jerry wishes to know the price of the meal before fat was included. He calculated 13.5% of 136.20 and subtracted from the total cost in the meal. Explain why Jerry will not get this uh, method correct. Well, the correct method is, well, we can explain what the correct method is. The correct method is, uh, it's 113.5%, so that's your 100% plus your 13.5% is equal to 136 euro 20 cents now a hundred percent of the meal is going to be dividing this by 113.5 multiplied by 100 okay so we're going to get is 113.5 and what we get here is going to be a 1.2 okay so and then we're going to multiply that by 100 to turn it back into a hundred percent and we get 120 euro okay now the reason being he doesn't get it right is the 13.5% is extra and is added to the cost. So 113.5% equals 136.20. Okay? And you won't get this number if you do this net. Okay? From July 1st, 2011, the fat rate on food in restaurants was reduced to 9%. How much would Jerry have paid for the meal after this date if the fat reduction was correctly applied? Well, what it would have been was 100% would still be 120 euro. And now we're going to look for 109%. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 100 to bring it to 1% and then multiply by 109. So 120. Divide by 100, multiply by 109, and what we should get here is 130.8. Okay, so that's the end of question 5.